Okay, so in this lecture, what we are going to do is, we have seen the ideal auto cycle, and in this lecture, we are going to see uh, the actual cycle, the way it looks on a on a typical, let us say, engine. So for the discussion today, uh, we are going to take a spark ignition engine, that is a petrol engine, and we will try to see uh, how the actual cycle differs from the ideal cycle. So let us make the uh, ideal auto cycle first and then try to superimpose on it the real cycle which you typically see in a spark ignition engine. So I am making an ideal auto cycle okay, and we have the compression stroke, we have the heat input at constant volume. So, this is the clearance volume V clearance as we all know and then the expansion work which is an adiabatic process and then the heat rejection uh, again at constant volume. So, this is the BDC or the bottom dead center of our engine. So, I can make a cylinder also here and there is a spark plug somewhere here and then let us say this is the BDC. Okay. So, the piston comes to the TDC, so this is the TDC position and this is the clearance volume which is remaining and then of course the heat is added uh, by, by the spark plug, okay. so this is the inlet valve and this is the exhaust valve. Okay. So, this is an ideal cycle, this is a PV diagram as we all know. Now, the first difference which is between this uh, let us say cycle and the real cycle is that this cycle we have assumed an air standard cycle that means the air was the working fluid and the air was trapped inside this control volume here and because of which uh, the, 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 this air was not really uh, in an ideal cycle this, this air was or the working fluid was not interacting with the environment. That means in a sense that there was no mass input to this volume and there was no mass exhaust from this volume. The air was trapped inside this combustion in this chamber in this control volume. Of course, the boundary of the control volume is moving in this case because the piston goes up and down uh, or, or, or from the BDC to the, uh, to the TDC and so the air is inside this and whatever processes of heat addition and heat rejection were going on, they were assumed to happen uh, through the boundaries uh, uh, in ideal, ideal processes. For example, all the heat was coming in at a constant volume and all the heat was also getting rejected at constant volume. However, as you will immediately realize that in an internal combustion engine, we want to take in the fuel charge mixture. In this case, it is a spark ignition engine, so we are de dealing with petrol engine. So, we are taking the, the mixture of petrol and air vapor, uh, 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 the mixture is inducted inside and naturally after the, after the compression, there is a spark and then the actual cycle must come in and then once the burning takes place, the exhaust gases must go out. So, the first difference is the ideal cycle was a closed cycle, it was a closed cycle while our actual cycle which will take place will be an open cycle. Okay. So, this is the actual and this was the ideal. The second difference of course, so let us try to see how do you induct uh, let us say air inside this system. So, when the inlet valve gets opened and the piston is moving backwards, naturally if this pressure is P atmosphere, then the pressure here must be lower than atmosphere. So, if we can if we can make a P atmospheric line here. So, this is the atmospheric pressure let us say. So, the suction when the suction takes place, the internal pressure must be somewhat lower than the atmospheric pressure and therefore, you can see let me pick up my, uh, my, uh, my syringe also as we all have been uh, working with this. So, if I have to if I have to suck air from the atmosphere through the inlet valve. Okay, then naturally my, my inlet pressure must be lower than the atmospheric pressure and therefore you will see that the actual cycle, okay, the actual cycle you will have an inlet stroke which will go somewhat like that lower, lowering the pressure okay, 
and from here the compression will start. Now as you will recall the engine is actually getting heated up also and so in the, the, the engine is simultaneously getting cooled also. So there is some heat transfer losses also which are taking place. So once the system comes up to here, the, the real cycle may not really follow an adiabatic path but may differ from the adiabatic path and there will be a difference between the ideal adiabatic compression. So this is let us say P V to the power gamma is equal to constant and the real one is somewhere here, this, this may be the real one, okay, which may not exactly be uh, following the adiabatic path and you may end up somewhere here. Now in an ideal cycle, uh, we had assumed that the heat will come at constant volume, that means instantaneous addition of heat. However, in a real cycle, the heat really does not come instantaneously. So therefore, the spark plug uh, actually has to start has to start igniting somewhere before the actual uh, piston comes to TDC because if it if it ignites at the TDC then what will happen is that the, the, the heat will start coming in and in that finite time the piston will actually start the downward direction that means it will start going towards the BDC. So in that process the, the rise in pressure and temperature which we want to achieve in the combustion chamber will not come and therefore to account for the finite flame propagation time, to, to account for the fact that the entire petrol mixture is not going to burn instantaneously, we need to ignite it a little earlier than if it would have been an ideal instantaneous fuel. However, it is not ideal, so it will take a little finite time and to account for that time, we will have to start the spark plug somewhere before. So actually in the compression stroke, the piston does not come up to the TDC, slightly before that the spark is ignited so that the petrol vapor will have sufficient time for the flame to propagate and give its entire energy. So that finite small time amount of time has to be accounted for in real cycles and therefore you will see that the heat has actually already started coming in and so the temperature may rise a little bit and then the pressure will start rising and somewhere down the line the ignition will finish and therefore you may not achieve the exact maximum. So this is the P3 is the maximum pressure, P max for example, it, it may not be possible for you to achieve and there, be, there may be some, uh, some small, uh, small gap which may remain here for example and then uh, uh, the, the expansion, the, the piston has already started moving back uh, and therefore the expansion stroke is, uh, is starting. Now the expansion stroke will also not be exactly adiabatic as the engine cooling is already taking place, there is a heat transfer taking place across the cylinder. So there is water flowing all the time across it. So the temperature, the heat is actually getting rejected, some, some small portion of the heat is actually getting lost uh, due to the heat transfer uh, between the hot gases which are inside. So we are, we, we are pretty hot here, the temperature is high, the pressure is high and the ambient is of course the water temperature which is flowing across uh, this, this, this combustion chamber and therefore there will be some let us say loss because of the heat transfer. So what you see here uh, is that there are several losses which take place. So this can be because of the heat transfer. This loss is because there is a finite time for combustion for example or non-instantaneous burning. This is non-instantaneous burning. It actually starts from here and it continues up to this point for example. So finite time for burning for example, okay. And then of course th there will be some heat transfer, so non-adiabatic process and then the heat rejection. Now in an actual engine when the expansion stroke has occurred and now we want to get rid of this exhaust gas which is inside. So we have already uh, we have already come up to this point, we are nearing, nearing the BDC, we are somewhere here okay, in, the, in the downward stroke and now the work, the, whatever maximum work is possible has been done and the, the piston has reached BDC. Now we want to get rid of this exhaust gases which are inside this combustion chamber. So naturally the exhaust valve is, uh, is not instantaneous, it will take some finite time to open and close. In a similar manner the inlet valve also has an inertia it will not completely open instantaneously because it is it is going um, opening and closing motion is happening. 
So, it will take some finite time in a, in a similar manner the exhaust valve also takes some finite time. Now, in the ideal cycle we had seen that the, the, the heat rejection was instantaneous from 4 to 1, but in reality you cannot completely remove this heat instantaneously. So, in, in a sense what we are doing is we are actually getting the heat out through the exhaust gas. So, the exhaust gas is actually pushed out and with that the enthalpy the remaining enthalpy is also going out. Okay. So, when we want to push out something through a pipe network naturally there is a valve there is a pressure drop and then this exhaust has to go to the exhaust manifold and to the, uh, to the, to the atmosphere eventually uh, through maybe a catalytic converter which is there in somewhere in between. So, there is a reasonable pressure drop from the atmosphere. So, this is atmospheric pressure. So, naturally the pressure inside this chamber if I have to push something out I have to have a higher pressure inside this chamber. So, at the higher pressure I will have to push out. So, some work will be done to push out and in that process the, 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 the pressure will be slightly higher than the atmosphere naturally then only you can push it and then from here again the piston starts uh, the inlet stroke. So, this is your intake and this is your exhaust. Okay, this is your exhaust and mind you this dotted line which I have made in between is the atmospheric pressure. So, you see that because of the, the reasons which we have discussed in the last class for example, uh, there are blow down losses because of this opening and closing, uh, there are heat transfer which, which is taking place all the time. So, you cannot maintain adiabatic conditions in the compression and the expansion stroke. In a similar manner there is non instantaneous burning, there is also part of the exhaust gas may have carbon monoxide or unburnt hydrogen for example, which will not give the enthalpy in the expansion and therefore, it is actually expelled out and it may do it may uh, it may be burning afterwards. So, we are not able to extract because of dissociation because of chemical dissociation we are not able to extract the entire energy from the exhaust gas. So, there are also uh, losses because of dissociation. So, which we have uh, which we have enumerated in the last class that means, we know uh, what are the reasons for the change uh, in the in the real cycle as compared to the ideal cycle. So, uh, to, to summarize uh, the ideal cycle was a closed cycle with air, the real cycle is actually operating with a mixture of gases that means, in the inlet and mind you the mixture of gases is also changing its chemical composition that means, when, when you took the intake when you took the intake in this stroke you had actually fuel plus air okay, that was what, what was being sucked. So, mind you the specific heat of the fuel plus air mixture is quite different than the specific heat of the exhaust gases. The exhaust gases when you are expelling them out it is actually carbon dioxide and uh, uh, water vapor and nitrogen okay. and of course, some amount of unburnt fuel and some amount of un, uh, let us say not fully oxidized fuel. Uh, that means, partially burnt fuel that is carbon monoxide may be uh, for example. So, that that is so, the composition of exhaust gas is quite different than the composition of the intake gas that is one important thing to remember. The specific heat therefore, of the intake gas is quite different than the specific heat of the exhaust gas that is the second point to remember. The third point to remember is that intake gas is cold, intake gas is at the ambient temperature and the exhaust gas is at a higher temperature and pressure the exhaust has actually started from this point somewhere onwards. So, part part of the enthalpy the higher temperature and pressure the exhaust valve because of the inertia has to open slightly before the, the piston reaches the BDC and therefore, uh, as you as you exhaust the gases these are at a different temperature. So, that not only the temperature of the exhaust is different the specific heat is different because the composition is different and naturally we do not really follow uh, the, the constant volume heat addition. So, this constant volume heat addition is not followed in a real cycle, it is a finite uh, it is not instantaneous burning and so therefore, you have to start the burning a little early so that the entire fuel is burnt. Mind you the time which is available here okay, when, when you have to add the heat is pretty low, okay, it is very small. Okay, you can imagine a piston cylinder uh, or, or a typical engine running at 4000 rpm or 5000 rpm 
so so the amount of time which is available for burning is extremely small it is in milliseconds orders of milliseconds so therefore uh, you have to make sure uh, that the entire petrol burns in the small amount of time and therefore the uh, the, the ignition timing has to be adjusted so we will dis in any case we will discuss about ignition timing in a separate lecture so for this lecture today uh, you should understand uh, that why what are the reasons for which a petro uh, uh, an ideal engine let us say we have taken the example of a petrol engine but you can exactly do the same uh, analysis or the same uh, chain of thoughts uh, you can do it for a diesel engine okay uh, and uh, and therefore an ideal diesel cycle will be different than an actual diesel cycle uh, in a very similar manner with, with uh, very similar reasons for example uh, so for this lecture uh, you should understand the difference between an ideal cycle and a real cycle and how does it look uh, on a pv diagram for example the way we have done today